What camera do I buy? What lens do I buy? These are the two most popular questions I get as a photographer and it was about time that I made a video on it. Now, I'm not gonna tell you exactly which model of camera you should purchase because I have not used every model of camera on the market. But I can suggest some models in different budget ranges you might want to consider when shopping around, give you my best tips when you're looking for a camera and a lens, and what gear that I've used in my business and what I currently use. The first thing I recommend against doing is buying what they call a kit lens. So this is where your camera body and your lens come as a kit, as a little package. So I did this with my first camera and I probably used my kit lens once and I hated it. So usually kit lenses aren't as high quality as say like a macro or a zoom lens on its own and we'll get to lenses in a second. So if you want to buy a camera, buy your body separately. And the biggest tip I do have is to go into a camera store and test drive some cameras so you can see how different brands and bodies feel as they do all feel slightly different. So when you're shopping for cameras, your budget is something that you should have a really good idea on. How much are you able to spend across your camera body and your lens together? So before you even enter that camera store, ensure that you've worked out a budget for yourself. Now, I would also decide on the brand you want to invest in. So your top brands are pretty much like Canon, Sony, and Nikon, Nikon. Nikon, whatever. Personally, I'm a Canon lover. However, for our commercial video productions, we actually use Sony. Now we use Sony for video over Canon as the dynamic range on Sony is usually better. And to give you an example of what dynamic range means, say you're filming your subject with the sky as the background and you've exposed for your subject, a camera with high dynamic range will be able to capture more detail in the sky so that you don't overexpose it. Now, if you are looking to do video as well, you should also consider what frame rate and resolution the camera features. Ultimately, if you're wanting to do product videos, you will want a camera that features 4K resolution and a frame rate of up to 100 to 120. But again, this depends on what you're shooting. 100 to 120 will allow you to shoot in slow-mo, giving your footage that like extra cinematic look. Now, some really popular camera bodies that both myself and many other photographers I know use include a Canon 6D Mark II, Canon 5D Mark IV, Canon R5, Canon R6, and a Sony A7 III. So I use the Canon 6D Mark II for ages, which is an amazing camera for the price of just over $2,000. I used the camera body for about three years before I upgraded to the Canon R5, which retails for just over $6,000, and I can say it is worth every penny. Now, the Sony a7 III is an incredible Sony camera for both photo and video and retails for around $2,500. We also upgraded to the Sony a7S III last year, which is just over 5,000, which definitely upgraded our video quality even more. Now, if your budget is around the $1,000 mark or so for your camera body, check out the Canon T6i and the Canon 90D. Otherwise, Nikon, Nikon, whatever do have some models with this budget as well, like the Nikon D750 and D5600. Now, along your photography journey, you will want to upgrade. So I recommend making a decision on the brand that you want to stick with right from the beginning and invest in that brand in the long term. And this is why I love going into a camera store because when I'm in the market for new gear, I get to see and feel the range of cameras at different price points, as well as talk to someone about the specifications. Also, pay attention to whether the camera you're looking at is a full frame or a crop frame camera. I didn't know about this when I was shopping for my very first camera and I ended up buying a Canon 70D which is a crop frame camera. So say for example, I'm using 35 mm lens on my crop frame camera. And this actually becomes closer to a 50 mm lens due to the fact of it being a crop frame. Now I found that when I was shooting flat lays, I had to get even higher above my scene in order to fit everything in. So I wish that I had purchased a full frame camera right from the beginning. Now you'll also want to know the difference between what a DSLR and a mirrorless camera is. Now I'm gonna leave 
leave a link to a really helpful article in the description box below because there's quite a bit of information on the difference between these two types of cameras. So a key advantage of a mirrorless camera is that they are more lightweight and slightly smaller. So this is something that I really loved when I upgraded to the Canon R5, which is a mirrorless camera, that it was noticeably lighter, which I just, I love. Okay. Now let's get to talking lenses. Now, personally, I think that your lens is more important than your camera body. And I get asked, how do you get such crisp and sharp photos? Now, even though I'm able to sharpen my photos in post-production, a good lens will produce a crisp, sharp, and clean image for you. Now, if your budget is around the $1,000 mark, I'd recommend going with a 50mm lens. For example, the Canon EF 50mm 1.8 lens is a nice, affordable lens around $200. And this was actually the lens that I started with. And I'd recommend if you're doing still life product photography in the studio to go for at least a 50mm lens. Otherwise, if budget allows, go for a 24 to 70mm lens because this lens is incredibly versatile. So I use the Canon L series 24 to 70 mil, which is around the $2,500 mark, but you can buy a 24 to 70 mil from other third party brands like Sigma or Tamron that do work out to be a little bit cheaper. And if more budget allows, I love my Canon L series 100 mil macro lens, which gives an even sharper image than my 24 to 70 mil. And this one retails for around 1400. Something that you do want to pay attention to as well is the f-stop of your lens. The f-stop is your aperture. So if you have an f-stop of say 2.8, this lens is going to let in quite a bit of light and you can get that really beautiful creamy background. Now a lot of the kit lenses I mentioned earlier in the video have an f-stop of around 4 being the lowest. So I think a lens with an f-stop of about 2.8 being the lowest is good. And if your budget is a little tired, I would personally go for a good lens over a better camera body. Now, if you are interested in building a career in product photography, make sure you go and check out my signature online course, Become a Brand Photographer, where I give you all the tools you need to start and build a sustainable and profitable brand photography business. I show you behind the scenes, heaps of Photoshop tutorials, as well as I dive into how to market yourself as a photographer, how to book clients, how to price your work, and heaps of other resources to help you get everything set up right from the start. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box below, and you can also use the code YouTube for 10% off. Overall, there is camera gear out there for every budget. And in my personal opinion, if you can afford to spend more on your equipment, then do so. Equipment actually does make a difference to your photos. Know what you're comfortable with in terms of your budget, head into a camera store if you can, test drive some cameras and lenses and see what feels good to you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and let's chat. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.